Hey hey everybody, this is Larry, this is me going over to 3 of the weekly contest 249, painting a grid with 3 different colors. Um, this is a tricky dynamic programming problem, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, we discuss the problems right after the contest generally, so if you join me on Discord, it'll be a fun time uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Anyway, so painting a grid with 3 different colors is a, is a tricky thing. Um, also, remember mod. I almost forgot this mod, but I was like, that doesn't make sense. This can be really big. But luckily, I did catch it later on. But the key thing to note is that the size of the grid is M is 5 and 1,000, right? So that we can take advantage of the M part because it's 5. Because, okay, so really brute force kind of way, you can see that um, if M is equal to 5, then... For each of those M M slots, which you know we have five slots, and each of them could be red, green, blue. So that means that you know the first slot can be have have three numbers, the second can have three or three colors, so forth. So this is equal to three to the fifth, right? Um, so that's the number of combination. Um, and from that, it actually is a lot fewer than three to the fifth. It turns out, and I did this by just running. Like running the code and kind of look at it. You could watch me solve it live in the contest and tr me try to figure out the, how to do these things. Um, how I did these things live anyway uh, during the contest. So 3 to the 5th is equal to 243. But if you actually test it out, there are only 48 uh, combinations where there are no adjacent colors. I don't know why my computer's a little bit slow on the typing. I banged on this, like, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, I'm mistyped because I couldn't see, but okay. So yeah, it turns out that there are only 48 different combinations. And this makes the math a lot easier to do uh, a brute force type of dynamic programming. If you're not... So one thing I would say is if you're having trouble with bit masks, um, and bit mass dynamic programming. Um, I have a video recently, maybe last month, about bit mass dynamic programming. Definitely review that one a little bit because what I do here is instead, instead of, is kind of okay. If you know how to do a binary bit mask, what I'm doing now is going to be a ternary bit mask. Mm. What, what is what is a bit in three? What a, but T bit? I don't know. But either way, it's going to be basically a base three number uh, of a mask representing representing a possible number, right? So basically, for example, you could map say R is equal to zero, green is equal to one, blue is equal to two, and then in that case, if you have some possibility, uh, let's say R B R B R doesn't really matter. Then you you can think about that as um, zero two zero two zero, and that is a ternary number. A ternary number being a base three number, to be clear. Base three number, and that's basically the way that I do it to keep things easier. Um, it's not strictly necessary though, to be honest. But that's the way that I think about it. So okay. So what do I do here? I do some pre-processing, but but the idea. To be frank, it's just brute force, brute force, brute force. Okay. So how do I brute force, right? Um, well, first I set a dynamic programming of, you know, and you actually don't need all of these. You can um, do the space optimization in your time. Um, definitely, you, right now, we'll talk about the running time complexity and the space complexity and what you need to do to reduce it. Um, but So I'm going to skip this for a little bit. Um, but basically, okay, so I have a thing that I convert a mask to an array back to RGB, um, except for a number form. So yeah, so basically here I go, okay, so R is equal to 3 to the M because that's the order possible uh, possible colors. Uh, on a given row, right? So one row could be, it starts with R, 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 R which is obviously zero. Um, except for that's not a valid one. Um, and then we go to R, 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 um, green. Whoops. I don't know why my computer is so slow, so I cannot see what I'm typing. So that's why I think it's a little bit awkward. 
um, and then so forth, right? Yeah, so that's basically my for loop here. I converted it back from the number into the color, uh, the colors except for the colors in number form. So, and then I check whether, you know, if there are two adjacent elements, right? In this case, for example, the red is next to red, so then we set it to false. If there's no um, duplicate colors in adjacent, um, if, yeah, if two adjacent cells always have different colors, then then this is going to be good, and we set it to P, which I m used to mean possibility, right? So that's basically one, okay? And if you have done this, uh, for, how did, and if you have done this, then for M is equal to 5, there are 48 possibilities. And I just, if you watch me solve it live, I just print this out, and I'm like, okay, that seems like a good math. Um, yeah, and I actually did another pre-processing step, which I think if you don't use Python, it's actually not, not necessary. But in Python, I think it's necessary, but I could be wrong. But it's just fast. It makes it faster, right? And what I do is pre-processing this. So now I look at um, two rows at a time. Mm, previous row is pre... If, uh, so this is... The prev uh, previous row in R, I guess I, I converted to, oops. And yeah. And this is the current row, right? And we look at this because we already know that everything in P is already, um, it's already filtered, right? There's no adjacent colors that are the same, and same thing in now. And then now the thing that we're checking is that that okay. Let's say we have the previous row, row, and now we have a new row. Can can they be next to each other, right? So for example, uh, for I don't know, R B R B R B R. This is a very dumb one. Our next row could be R. I don't know, R. Mm, even R B G. Whatever, right? Like here, they're both valid, but they're not valid together because R is next to R, right? So that's basically what this thing ch does: is that it checks. The two adjacent rows, and and if they're good at the way, so if if they're equal, then they're not good. If they are good, we set it so that um, for every previous row that is p, uh, previous is compatible with now. Is basically what this is saying. Um, yeah, because if the previous row is this set of colors then this current row can be this. So I just use this to kind of filter it down because we're going to do this operation very often because basically for every row, we're going to do this operation, so why not pre-process it? And that's basically the idea. Uh, this is our base case. And this is our base case. Um, this is our base case of, okay, one row for each uh, valid possibility or we have one unique way of, do of ending the last row here, right? Because basically our DP is, I, I think I was terrible when I didn't explain this part, but our DP is DP of um, I sub J or maybe, uh, yeah, I sub mask, let's say, uh, is equal to um, the number of ways to um, to be on the ith row and the last row containing the colors uh, mask. That's basically what what this DP sub i is doing, and and yeah, and this is becomes re relatively straightforward if you're into counting dynamic programming because then now we start the second row and for every second row we go okay we look at the previous row we look at the next row which you know we've already pre-calculated um and it should have even fewer items um but but yeah and this is just you know adding it to the the previous row and the number of ways to get there and then mod it out 
um, because we have to care about the mod. At the end, we sum it and mod it. Um, so that's pretty much it. So what is the complexity here? I mean, I know that I hand waved over this part a little bit, but if you do have trouble with this, definitely go over dynamic programming, counting problems. Um, I think this is, um, and this is brute force because basically it just looks at all the possibility of the last row and all the possibility of the current row, right? And yeah, so what is the time complexity? Well, here, so we, you know, this is just for loops, so you can count the for loops. So we have loops of n times uh, 3 to the m, because that's the upper bound on p, even though it, it, it self constrained itself to be much smaller, so maybe someone can have, do a tighter bound. Um, here as well, like I said, it, it has even a tighter bound, but if you want to be, if you mm, without proving it too hard, this is the big O upper bound, right? And yeah, given M is equal to 5, it is roughly going to be fast enough, especially given that if you do the pre-processing, it filters it even more. In terms of space, it is actually O of N times 3 to the N, but, 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 like I said, this part is actually technically smaller. Um, but, you know, uh, we just did it this way anyway, or I did it this way anyway. Um, yeah, but, but keeping in mind that if you look at this dynamic programming thing, we only, we only used the current row and the previous row. So, so for up solving, reduce this to O of 3 to the M space, right? So, that's my homework for you if you're watching. Um, it's actually not that hard. I mean, if you ch follow the channel, I've gone over, I've explained this many times. Uh, I'm not going to do it today because that's not the interesting part of this problem anyway. But if you have time, I definitely recommend, you know, reviewing it and doing that because it is way, excuse me, it's way handy. Um, that's basically all I have for this one. Uh, let me know what you think and you can watch me solve it live. Next. Okay. One, 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 two, five, five. M is up to five. Okay. That's pretty okay. All right. Just two to the fifth. Okay. There's two forty three. Two adjacent seven. Okay, I mean, this is pretty easy, but not pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but okay, let's figure it out. Um, Maybe I went the other way actually. Variable names are terrible. Four.
Okay. Right. Okay, seems good. DP sub previous MP Is that two percent? Mm. Okay, let's just print it out. Forty-eight. Okay, so then it's just forty-eight times forty-eight times a thousand. It should be fast enough. Okay. Mm. And we can actually do better. We could pre calculate it. it up here yeah, it should be okay and then now okay should get a helper okay fine We should get this one faster to be honest, but it's fine, I guess. This feels like a Q4, to be honest. Mm. Right, okay. So, okay. For now, in NX of previous. Is there any mod? Is this too big? Yep, okay. Ooh, I forgot the mod song. Mod, mod, because I missed it. Mod, 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 mod. <sighs> but, okay.
Mm, that doesn't look right, right? Oh, that is right. Three, six, okay. Is that fast enough? Let's give it a go. Mm, well, you can actually test if it's fast enough, Larry. Let's run it real quick. Okay, that looks fast enough. Let's give it a go. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the support. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem in general, my explanations, whatever you need to ask. Um, I'll probably put it in the comments or, you know, in a future video what to go over. Um, yeah, stay good, stay healthy, stay cool. To good mental health, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.